Um, Mark, the next question actually is very geared towards um, you because uh, the question is, we've seen uh, proliferation in material mix and how these trends impacted structural repairs. Uh, do certain materials make for an easier or more challenging repair or a strong structural integrity? Very interesting question. So if you look at what our charges as manufacturers in terms of meeting crash testing, but also light weighting and fuel economy and, and lower emissions, we're pretty much forced to go to material mixes that we've never had before. So you're seeing combinations of aluminum and steel put together, aluminum, carbon fiber, carbon fiber and steel and so forth. So it it plays a big part. What you're also seeing is crash zones being introduced in a way that we've never really seen before. So to Daryl's point and to Robert's point, yes, you are seeing a lot less um, pulling in terms of structure because you have materials. Um, again, steel is not just steel. There are different grades of steel and variants and same thing with aluminum and carbon fiber. They don't take to pulling very well. What we need to see is a mindset change from the old days of, I can put it on a 60 ton uh, dozer that I could pull a garbage truck straight with and get away from that and say, okay, I need to follow the OE repair procedure and I need to replace it at this. So that's that's one set that that we see. The other change is fasteners come with co uh, coatings on them to prevent corrosion and uh, contact between the dissimilar metals. So we probably should see a much larger rise in replacement of fasteners that we have had in the past. Adhesives are not just glue that's not things together like we did with model airplanes as a kid. They are not only the adhesive that keeps the two materials together, but they are the uh, corrosion protection that keeps those two materials from interacting with each other and causing a corrosion. It also puts a, a heightened eye on restoring corrosion protection and uh, someone in the industry said, hey, if you're not going through a can of corrosion protection on pretty much every job, you're not using enough. That is becoming more of the case as well. So we have to stop looking at ourselves as, as blacksmiths in days of yore where we could do those things and really look at this as, hey, if I follow the procedure, it actually gets a lot easier because there's less for me to figure out. Interesting. Robert, when you're, you know, you, you have to dive into these uh, vehicles on a daily basis, um, fixing them yourselves with the crazy material mixes. You know, are you finding that the, the repair is taking a lot longer, the repair is taking a lot more complication to research it? Like, what do you feel you're seeing when you work on an average job? I think whenever it first came along, it was a little more difficult. Um, when we first got into a lot more of the bonding and riveting and uh, different forms of attaching the materials, um, it changed it a little bit. It made it a little bit more time consuming. But as time has gone on, it's become a whole lot more fluid. Um, and you can see the stability of the repair and how much more valid of a repair it is than years past. Um, and that's back to the also as far as pooling and stuff like that, that's the change is because now with everything glued and welded together, whenever you go to try to pull something, you're separating glue and you're ruining the integrity of what was actually there, which is why OEM has changed so much to replacing components versus pulling and repairing. How about yourself, Daryl? I don't know if I'd call it more difficult, it's just different. Um, you know, like Robert, we had some people experience some of these new technologies and it was a, a challenge. It's, 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 uh, um, but 
really, in a lot of cases, the manufacturers do a good job of describing how you perform the procedure. I mean, we're, we're putting on aluminum quarter panels and mapping out where the rivets are supposed to go and, and what size rivets and where you do a stitch weld and where you put adhesive and things like that. It's not necessarily overly difficult once you've done it some, you know, and again, we've got some people that are becoming quite accustomed to it and being quite productive with it. So I make the point, it's just different. Yeah, I, from a, a, an equipment standpoint, um, on some of these new metals, because one of the trends at the moment happens to be um, very hard metal thick, very hard metal thick, and then a paper thin layer. And when you pull the trigger on the spot welder and the spot weld just happens, I can't stress mm -hmm. enough how much engineering has gone into that to make that program work. Um, so yeah, we are going to see uh, a nightmare just welding some of these metals. And uh, the real hard steels that are out, uh, for this year, going into next year, the spot welds aren't even going to be drilled out. They're going to be punched out. So the, the material mix is just going to keep changing and evolving more and more and more every day. Uh, 